Okay, welcome back to another session of EL164 Online. Today is uh, Chapter 10, Lab, using the Data Manipulation Instructions. Okay, so today we're going to deal with data manipulation. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is, as always, I create a new file. I'm going to call this new file data manipulation. As always, I have zero expansion modules. Let's go through this here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my uh, my tags over here. So I'm going to go over here, create some tags. Start with double integers today. Close. Create, keep open. How about some binary? I call this boolean. Create, keep open. Um, how about some integers? Keep open. Um, how about um, some counters? Create and open new. Okay, and then last but not least, there's some timers in there. Okay, got that in there. I'm gonna hit uh, create that. Go back here and make sure I got everything I need. I got 10 counters, 10 timers, 10 integers. It's like I screwed up on the Boolean. I'm gonna come down here, go edit. I'm gonna go over here, Boolean. Click on this guy. Put in a one here. Hit OK for that. And that's gonna give me what? 32 bits again. So now I got 10, 32, 10, 10, and 10. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Perfect. Okay, I got all the information into my tags. I'm going to go ahead and download now. And something didn't go right. Uh, empty run. Okay, so we got problems. So I got to put some logic in here. For today's lab, I've got a uh, user normally open, one normally open, one normally close push button, an output light. And then we're going to do some move functions. Move an A into a output word when it's on, and move a 5 into the output word when it's off. Okay, as you can see here, I've created the, uh, the sealing logic, or the start-stop program, using an internal binary. Next, I need to add the move statement. So uh, we'll, uh, you'll see exactly what I'm going on here. I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll uh, bring you through this whole step process here. So first thing I'm going to do is grab a rung, create a new rung. We come in here and say, so the first piece is when it's on. So when this bit comes on, I drop it in here. And then I want to come over here to the move function. Move is over here. So I grab the MOV. And I'm going to grab this information here, drop it in right there. Oop. For some reason, it doesn't want to go today. Source one, we're gonna just grab. We can, uh, I can put a reg, I can make a register here. I can put a value in here. So I'm gonna do first thing. I'm gonna do is, uh, 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 I asked for a, a hex value, so I'm gonna go pound. Oh, I did that backwards. 16 pound sign a for the first value. I right, like that caps. And then I'm going to dump this right into the output data word. So I'm going to come over here, data word. I'm going to dump it to the whole word, not one bit, but the whole word, all 16 bits of that output word. Now I'm going to duplicate this. So the easiest way to, to create logic is by copying it. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it, paste it here. 
So what I'm going to do is here is I want to make sure that then it's on the off state. So I'm going to go XIO. So when this bit's off, it's going to turn this on. And in the off state, I want to put a 5 in there. So as we all know, 5 hex is the same as 5 decimal. But I put in there this 5 hex just so we understand uh, that we can create a hex value. And it doesn't have to be in an A, B, C, D, E, or F form. So in a 5, it can still be read as a 5 in hex, which is obviously the same thing as decimal. It is at this time I will download. Okay, now I have downloaded the program, so it's all ready to rock and roll here. We're going to make things happen here. I'm going to go ahead and create, turn on the sealant circuit. Um, and uh, we should see a value of 5. Oh, you know what? Dinkers, I'm not in run mode. Let's get this thing in a run mode here. Okay, so now we're in run mode. We got run mode, we're controller okay, we're I okay, is I always okay. It's okay. So I've got putting a five into my output data table because this is off. So if I turn this on, I go over here and hit this button to turn it on. Binary zero. I got the wrong one. All right, hold on here. Uh, uh, let's do some online editing here. That's a good opportunity to do some of that. So we come in here, we'll go over here. I don't know how that took place, but somehow we decided it was going to change my input on me. Accept the edits. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to press this button. And this output turns on, or this light, this this binary bit turns on, sealing it in, and it turns this guy on, which is now setting this register to what? Let's take a look here. If we can zoom in on this guy a little bit, there we go. By hitting the uh, uh, control and the wheel on the mouse, I'm able to zoom in and zoom out on this. So as you can see, by doing so. Now I have a value of A in my output data. So if you are looking at my controller as I am seeing it now, we will see uh, the uh, a 1010 in my lights. When I turn this off with this button here, I end up with a 0101 now in my outputs. So to better illustrate how this is taking place, I'm going to flip it back and forth a couple times so everybody can again gather what's going on there. So when this guy is in the off state, we're going to be moving a what a five into that location, and when it goes to the on state, we're moving an A. So I flip it back and forth a couple times here just to make sure everybody understands what's going on. So I'm moving a five in there, and I'm moving an A in there. A five, an A. See how it's flipping back and forth. Okay, that completes uh, a part two. This would be the first sign off. Had we uh, had online lecture, but unfortunately we are, are still on a uh, uh, remote location here. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to part three here, following the lab. Uh, here we're going to develop a program using a mass move uh, using a subroutine called MVM or mass move subroutine. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. I'm going to create a new subroutine. Let's go ahead and go offline. Uh, new routine. I'm going to call this MVM. MVM. See, uh, MVM showed up here. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to create a new rung here. And what do we got to do? I got to go to what? I got to go to program control. Remember this from last class period. Program control is where I find what? JSR jump subroutine. Here I'm going to select here. I'm going to go find MVM. And I'm going to come in here and then remember before we had to remove instruction parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and remove instruction parameters. Now as there's no more ease here, I'm going to go ahead and download this information. So now all of a sudden I'll have my MVM populated and running.
Okay, I downloaded that. I'm over here. I'm going to switch over to MVM, my new subroutine. And now I'm going to create some logic to, uh, to incorporate this mask move. So how are we going to go about doing that? First thing we had to develop a program to using a mask move. So what we're going to do here is we've got to create a new rung. I'm going to go over here to favorites. Let's, uh, let's just put a push button in front of that. See, uh, I've already used uh, zero. So let's just see. Here. We're going to grab one. So let's push button over. And then I want to do a mask move. Where do I find that? Under move logical. That's that MVM here. So the first thing it notes here is I have to come up with an integer zero for my source. So I come in here, I got to find what integer zero. It says to here I want to use the mask, set the mask to the digital input word. So where are we going to find that? Where do we find that? We find that right under here. Digital input word, digital one data. Right there, that's what we want right there, the whole word. We're going to use that input information from the, the push buttons and toggle switches to create the mask. Kind of a cool idea. And then we come out of here and we're going to be writing this to integer one, double, or in a, uh, just integer one. So we come in here, integer one. Now, why are we using integers? Why do you think that is? Uh, for those of you that are, that are not so sure, I'll, I'll review that real quick. Uh, integer is what, 16 bits long? How many inputs do we have associated to this processor? 16 bits. So what I'm comparing and moving and all this sort of thing, I'm moving information, mass moving this with 16 bits. So I got 16 bits of my source, 16 bits of my mass, 16 bits of my destination. This is kind of critical. We can't, we can't um, uh, move information. Sometimes it lets us get away, lets us get away with it, but not always. So we got to just be aware that we got to have the same number of bits that we're manipulating in these blocks. That otherwise it gives us some errors when we try to do that very thing. So as you can see, I got some eyes over here. That means I'm doing what online editing. So let's go ahead and finalize these edits. See what happens here. Hey, it seemed to like it. All right. All right, now we've got the mass move in. I went ahead and uh, filled in these registers. Uh, the first, uh, the source is uh, an uh, F081. The local is the input data word. I, I uh, switched all these to read and binary so it would help understand what was going on here. And then the uh, last piece is the integer one. Uh, I went ahead, went ahead and put a clear register uh, rung in here as well, so, uh, a separate input, so we can get a better understanding of how this mask actually takes place. As you can see now, I have actually triggered it once with the eight, uh, input eight, and I have the value of what? Eight, zero, zero, zero in there. So as you can see, I've got that there. So if I hit this uh, I9, it zeroes it back out again. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is that uh, when I have the value of uh, this one here and this one here, uh, as you can see, you end all these components together and you end up with uh, zeros. So if I take this guy here and turn him off, and I trigger this, we should still have a zero. So let's see if I hit... Uh, if I hit number eight, I should see all zeros in the destination. This is coming on in all zeros. As you can see, if you, we're lining all these bits up, one next to each other. You see it, it's an and, a one zero. A one zero and is always going to be what? Zero. So when I come back through here and I create one of these inputs and turn them on that, that will be aligned with something like this, See, I turn on bit number 16. So I've got this guy on here. When I trigger this guy here, it will come to be true down here. Awesome, excellent. So now you can see that mask <coughs> uh, only allows where there's a one through to the, the next segment here into this integer one. If I take away that mask, that number 16 bit, and so now that bit is masked out, and I trigger 
this MVM again, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to zero that out? Is it going to move a zero in that location, or is it going to keep it a one? Now it's mass. It's not going to see. It's not going to transfer any information to this location now because it is mass. Watch this here. Triggered. No change in state. It still stays a one. Now what I have to do is I got to come over here and clear that word with a nine. And you see I drop that out of zero. That comes on. That makes it zero. And now if I hit the 8 again, you will see it keeps it as a 0. So keep that in mind. When you're masking something, you're masking not only the 1s, but the zeros as well. So you're not letting anything through to this, slope, through this mask. So whether it is a, uh, a 1 or 0 up here, uh, if, if it is masked out, if it's a 0 here, it is not coming through to this point here. And then I'll illustrate here how I can uh, turn on a few more bits here. So I've got uh, all these bits here on, and then if I go ahead and, uh, oh, I got nine on as well, so I turn off nine, we will see what? We'll see wherever there's a one, uh, we bring, we're bringing it through. And then uh, these are all zeros, here's a one here, but there's no one in that location. And uh, that's pretty much how that, that plays through. Um, let's see what happens when I turn on this one here, which is going to be bit number eight. Oh, I don't have a bit number eight. I only have a bit number seven. So let's turn on bit number one and see what happens there. Bit number one and bit number one. With this in place, you should see that come on. So here we are. We saw when I close this, it sees a one here, brings a one here, brings a one through. We turn it back off. It stays a one. Why? Because now it's mass. It's it's moving, but because it's a zero, it's not moving that information to this location anymore. The only way I can clear that register now is by taking this and turning them on, clearing him out, and then coming in here. And if I trigger him again, you will see at that point it is cleared out. So that is part three of the lab, where we move, mass move uh, some information from one location to another, keeping in mind that mask ignores wherever there is a zero to the destination. So whatever is in the destination has to be uh, manipulated either externally from that or um, if, you're, uh, if you're changing that mask or uh, um, you have to uh, uh, utilize the uh, source information to, to manipulate that destination data and keep the mask the same. Typically, in most applications, you'll see the mask uh, not change. Usually, you, you set the mask to one number, and then uh, you're feeding data through the source, and that data in the source is uh, being transferred through the mask, depending on what bits you want to, particular, uh, in particular, that you want to manipulate. Okay, so now we are on to the next section, uh, next piece of this, uh, uh, step number four. Here we're going to uh, use the, uh, develop a program using the copy, file copy command. Again, uh, what I want to do is get in the habit of creating subroutines. So I'm going to go ahead and create another subroutine for this application. So I'm going to walk you guys through that one more time. New routine, come in here, type in copy. Copy. So now I've got the copy routine here. I'm going to go in here. Uh, I can do this right while we're in run mode, I believe. So let's see about to add another run here. So add a run. And we're going to do a uh, copy command here. Or a, excuse me, a jump subroutine. So we're going to do a, uh, a file miscellaneous. I don't know. That was program. It was, I don't know. That was a. Uh, Program control, JSR, jump subroutine. I'm going to come in here, type, uh, I'm going to find copy, right there it is. And then again, we got to go through here and remove instruction parameters. Okay, so now we've got that. At that point, we can accept that and send that to the processor. So now we are calling the copy command. So now this copy command is being called. 
So now we can move into the next process, developing the code for this. Okay, now we're going to create a copy command. We got, uh, got, a, got a new run created here. So let's go ahead and grab some uh, favorites here. Let's go here, favorites. Grab a contact. Come over here to move logical and file miscellaneous. Copy there. Just file miscellaneous. Copy. We'll grab that guy right there. And then we'll come over here, put an address on this location here. We'll just stick with that uh, same input we've been using, so that works there. Let's start PB. Uh, how, about, how about we go with selector switch so I can leave it on. And then here we're going to grab a source file. Uh, this time we're going to do double integers. So I want to grab a source file, say, from a double integer zero. And I want to put that in to say, how about a counter? A counter value, oh, wait a minute, I can do multiple counters here. Why don't, why don't I do it this way? Why don't I do a double integer? Um, better yet, why don't I create another word? That's what I'll do. New tag, call this uh, copy destination. I will go here, got double, it's already a double integer, that's good there. And I want to create, say, 10 of these as well. Go ahead and create that. So now I'm going to come in here. I want to have this guy be double copy destination, total 10 of those. So now I can do Excuse me, I'm going to do 10 words of this information. So I'm going to grab 10 double integer zeros here. So I see here I've got, uh, as we've done in the past, we've created 10 of each. I've got 0 through 9 here. And I'm going to copy destinations, going to have 0 through 9 here. So when I say I want to do 10 registers of information, I'm going to be copying all 10 of those. So let's take a look and see how that responds to it. I'm going to populate uh, each one of those registers with a, uh, with a number. OK, as you can see here, I've set up some of this uh, so you didn't have to watch me set all this up. Uh, uh, input 8 is feeding the copy command, the copy, uh, file copy command. The source is double integer 0. The destination is copy destination zero. That means that we're going to be pulling all these words, each, 60, each one of these 32 bit words, excuse me, are going to be transferred to this location here. All right, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and populate this information here. I'll Okay, now I've got this populated. I'm going to go ahead and download this information. So at this very moment, you guys can see double integer 0 through 9 has got 0 through 10, or 1 through 10, excuse me, 1, 1 through 10. At this very moment, also, we do not have anything populated here in copy destination 0 through 9 all zeros. So we're going to go to the logic here, copy command over here. I'm going to close this command here, close this contact here, and we're going to see the information populated, and you'll actually be able to visu visually see this in all these move statements as well, but uh, let's, let's see what happens here. Hit the command. We come in here, we hit this guy, as you can see already, I have 0 through 10, populated in these statements here. We'll go to those tags. And look at there. It's a complete copy. Copied all 10 words from this location to this location. <clears throat> so the reason I had to put those moves in there is I had to move a 0 to each one of those locations, right? I can move one word in a move statement. I can move one source to one destination. So I'm moving... Uh, this zero to this location. So I'm going to hit this I9 now 
See, I8 is off and hit I9. And you're going to see what? They zeroed all those registers out. So we'll go back to the tags here. And you guys can see they're back to zero. If I hit I8 while we're in this screen, you will see it populate just like so. And if I hit I9 here, you'll see it go back to zero. So this is where watching the data table really comes in handy when you've got to look at multiple locations at the same time. Where we can um, notice, notice we can always see only about a few of these rungs or a few of these, these move statements at a time. So if there's multiple rungs of logic we're trying to mon manipulate and mo mo um, monitor, um, by going to the tags, we're able to do that very thing. We can sit here and watch these imp these bits here. We'll know when they get they moved in, and we know when they get cleared. So, kind of a handy little feature that uh, that data table is. All right, so that's how the copy command works. We uh, basically take ten of these registers here, and we're copying them to ten of these locations here. Uh, but it has to be continuous. It has to be uh, you couldn't like skip um, one, two, and three. It has to, it has to go zero through nine because we selected ten or. We had 15 to be 0 through 15, 14, excuse me. However, it's set up like that. So, so it's a continuous uh, flow of registers. It's not, it's not uh, pick and choose between them. It's, it takes the whole series of registers, 0 through 9 in this case, and it ro drops them in 0 through 9 in the, the copy destination. Now, as you can see here on the bottom of this, to, to clear this, I set up a whole bunch of moves. Uh, my, my reason behind this was is to, to give you a feel. Okay, there's a lot of work that can be that can be that can require um, to reset a register or something like this. So I mean, you can see I went through the trouble of making these individual moves, so uh, so you get an understanding of how much work it can be to do this. When we look at the next command here, you'll see exactly how handy it is to do the, what they call the file fill, which is step number five. We're going to move into that. Okay, as you can see here, I have the uh, JSR for the FFL created, and I created the subroutine FFL, FLL, excuse me, uh, for file fill. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, populate file fill with uh, some good information here. Alright, so for this command I'm going to take and uh, I'm going to eliminate, uh, using this command, I want to eliminate these co these move commands that I have I placed here in the previous, uh, excuse me, in the copy command. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to go in here, we're going to create a, a series of contacts and whatnot here. Let's start with the favorites, create a contact, we'll go in here and grab uh, that same input we've been using. So. Uh, Local one data. That first toggle switch works pretty well. Then we're going to come over here. We're going to go to uh, file mis manipulate file miscellaneous. Excuse me, FLL file fill. Here this time we're going to grab a source value. See, uh, I can put a source value of just put zero in here. I want to just put zero wherever I wherever I have information that I don't want to have information. And what we're going to do is we're going to zero out that destination, that copy destination location. So we're going to come in here. I'm going to go copy destination zero, a length of 10. Oh, wait a minute. When I go to copy destination, I think if I do eight, I'm going to do that. I have trouble there. Uh, let's see here. I think I better go 10. Let's go to 10. Okay, we're going to accept that uh, that one there. Yes, here. Okay, so now let's see how this guy works. So we're going to come in here. We're going to hit the uh, go back to copy. We're going to hit this eight again. So we're going to populate the copy destination with information. So I'm going to hit eight. Go back to copy. Hit this eight, and we're going to see. Information populated. Oh, destination. Uh oh, I might have uh, something on already. Hold on, let's see what we got going on here. Oh, 10 is on. Let's turn 10 off. Can't uh, put anything in there if it's zeroed already. So let's try that again. I'm going to hit 8. 
And there it is. The copy destination has been populated. We go over to file fill, FLL. We're going to trigger this command. And then we're going to go back to the tags and see what we got there. We zeroed them all out. So all those, all 10 of those registers are cleared out by using one command versus using 10 commands. A much more efficient way of handling that situation. I gotta believe you agree with this. So instead of creating 10 rungs of moves like I have over here, which does the very same thing, I can do the same thing with one function that does the same operation. That moves zeros to all those locations. Now I could have grabbed something as some. I could have grabbed another file here. So let's go ahead and, and fool around a little bit. Uh, pending edits. Let's grab something like. Uh, I want to move the uh, counters accumulator to that location. Accept that edit. Now the counters, counters accumulation zero is uh, um, counter zero is going to the accumulator and counter zero excuse me is going to be set to zero at this point I believe because I have not created any counters at this point, but we'll validate that. Okay, so counters accumulation at this point is zero. So let's say I want to make it something other than zero. I want to make that say count of 50. Say we've counted to 50. We reach that count. We want to populate that information to all 10 registers. I'm getting crazy with the count. Clicking here. Clicking, clicking, and clicking. Okay. All right. Now, when I press that button over here and file fill, instead of moving uh, zero to that location, it's going to move what? It's going to move 50 in that location. Let's see what happens here. Click on number 10 here. Let's go back to tags. And what do we got? We filled it full of 50s. So just to give you a feel, uh, it's a pretty handy little command. It gets uh, fills up a lot of registers with the uh, with information. Gives you the, um, the ability to uh, uh, manipulate uh, uh, multiple registers from one location. Pretty handy little tool. Uh, like I used it before, before is moving zeros into there. It works really handy when you got to clear a, seri a, a, a large file or a, lot, a large series of, of words uh, to a zero back, back to zero again. So, works pretty well for that. So that is how the FLL works. Essentially, uh, one source, multiple destinations. Think of it as uh, just. Dispersing uh, the information from this location to multiple locations. Um, we're on section six now, or piece or part six of this. Probably the uh, the most uh, demanding of all of them, as far as um, well the pieces that we're incorporating. But uh, I think you'll get a pretty good handle on on what we're trying to do here. We're going to try to use all the uh, different uh, compare instructions in one rung of logic. So uh, I'm going to develop a few pieces of these so you uh, you can uh, you don't have to sit and watch me uh, develop a bunch of code. So I'm going to pause it for a quick second. Okay, as you can see here, the first part of this, I had incorporated a flasher circuit. So the, uh, the uh, flasher circuit, as we learned in a previous lab, uh, is set up. And all I'm doing is sitting here uh, setting it up with a counter. So the counter is actually counting up uh, as you can see, and I just set the preset to 5,000, some random number that was really high that I didn't want it to impact uh, the operation of my uh, of my my program here. Next piece of this is I got to start setting up some of these uh, these uh, uh, compare instructions. So uh, again, I'm, I'm going to uh, pause the, the the program a little bit here, so you don't have to watch me go through. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go to the first one first. So uh, I'll go ahead and go offline here. So where do we find the compares? Right here under compare. So I got to come here, create a new rung. I got my compare here. First one we have is uh, we're going to use the limit. Uh, the CMP is available. I, I'm, I'm going to kind of skip over that. I'm going to skip over the, the mask equal to something. A couple pieces of this you don't use a ton of. So I, I thought I would focus on the post points that uh, we use the most. So I thought this would be a good spot to, to throw some of that in. So the first uh, <laughs> limit we have to deal with is turn the light on when the value of the counter is in the range of 5 and 6. So the, the high range of this is what? Excuse me, low range of this is going to be what? The 5. Did I 
this is it? Uh, five and six. Oh, I meant four and six. I'm sorry, I meant four and six. We're going to be testing the counter zero. So come over here, go to counters, counter zero, accumulated value. That's this value here, the, the accumulated value. It's at zero at this moment. And then the high limit is going to be four and six. So we got six here. Okay, so when we see the value of uh, four, five, or six, we want to do what? We want to turn on light one. So we're going to turn on our first light. So I'm going to come back over here to favorites, turn on our output, uh, switch us to an output here. And that's going to be under output data. My first light is under zero. So there's my first limit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll keep pulling a couple of these from comparison and then we'll, we'll be discussing them here real quick. Oh, uh, break it in again. Uh, we got this limit here. I, what I can do is again copy this. Uh, it's a lot easier to copy than it is to create. So I'm going to copy this wrong. I'm going to paste this wrong here. And here I, I want to flip flop the ranges. So I want this to be a six. And I want this to be a four, because what we're going to do is we're going to look for the, the numbers that are outside the range between six and four. Remember when um, we talked about that in lecture, uh, this is looking for inside the range of four to six. This is looking outside the range between four and six. So anything, anything any number outside of four and six will turn this output on. So we're going to turn this on output one. Okay, next one I want to include is the uh, equal. I'm going to come in here, grab a rung here, throw in the equal. That's not equal, equal there. So what I'm saying here is, again, is the uh, value is the counter value, counter zero, accumulator, equal to, this is equal to six. Equal to six, we turn it on an output. Oh, what happened there? I must have screwed up. We turn on an output number three, light number three. Next one is a less than or equal to. So again, I come over here, create a run, come in and throw this in there, and then do the compare, and then less than or equal to. Oh, I don't need a contact here. What was I thinking? Uh, I need, uh, so I'm looking at the source. This again is going to be that counter. I could grab this guy here, drag him right in there. Here, I'll do that. I can. Yeah, just like that. Yep. And uh, this has got to be greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to five. And this is the output is to be five. I'll put five. I think I missed one here. I gotta go back and add one here. This is five. I'm gonna insert a rung here. I forgot not equal to. So let's grab compare. Not equal to. Well, I'm going to grab him again. Not equal to zero. And it's going to turn on output. I want to do this. Four. There we go. 
five, and then, um, so when this guy's not equal to zero, so I turn him on, when this guy is less than or equal to five, it's gonna turn this guy on, and we got one more to do is greater than or equal to, so let's do that one. Greater than or equal to. Again, using the same uh, counter again. ACC. Greater than or equal to 10. We want to reset the counter. Okay, so where do we find that? Under counter, reset. And that counter is the same counter here. But as you can see, it got way up here. I don't want to copy instructions. I'm just going to have to type it in here. Okay, so now when we reach the value of 10, we should reset our counter back to zero again. So let's see how this whole thing plays out. Let's download this whole thing. As you can probably hear, I've got a whole bunch of click and relays here. So what exactly is taking place here? So we can see here, this guy here is clicking on when he's in the range of four to six. Kicks on when it's above four, or when it reaches four, and stays on until it hits six. So four turns on, five, six, turns off after six. So this guy here, he's uh, reading anything outside of four and six. So it's five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Oh, I must have something going on here. Hold on here. I know what I got going on. I got multiple rungs being called here. Let's go to main. Uh, yeah, I got some outputs being called from other areas. Let's just let's, let's shut this down here. I'm gonna go ahead. Okay, so now we've got our limits in. So now we're gonna evaluate how this all works. So what we're looking at here is I got a, a flash of circuit flashing up and down. And then I got a counter counting um, uh, from basically counting to 10 uh, every half second, as you can see here. I'm then back to, well, it skips 10 because uh, all the way we're setting it up, but uh, you'll see why here in a second. So the first piece of this I wanted to look at is look at how, evaluate how this is taking place. So we come in, this guy here turns on when we reach the value of what? Four. And turns off when we reach the value of what? Seven. Now this one's in real, this is the uh, outside the limit area. The, uh, the low limit is higher than the, the high limit. We talked about this in lecture. Watch how this one responds. So when the value of this guy reaches what? Five, it turns off, but it turns back on as soon as it reaches six. So it's the value between four and six that it turns off in. So keep that in mind. That may get you on the exam or something. So make sure you're aware when this guy turns off, five is the only number it turns off at. So this might get you. So be careful. This is, a, this is one to pay close attention to. All right, uh, next piece of this is equal statement. As you'd expect, it only turns on when this value here is equal to six. Four, five, six, clicks on, drops back off at seven. Not equal, as you would anticipate, draw, uh, it actually uh, does uh, click off, or excuse me, uh, uh, when it is equal to zero, but where it's happening so fast that uh, we're not seeing it. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna put a little delay in here. Watch this. Uh, let's see here. Um, 
This is going to get it to 10, but that's not going to get to zero. Let's do this. Not equal to. Uh, yeah, I go here. How about I say not equal to one? That way we can actually see it. That's even better yet. That way I don't have to fool around with the logic and we can get through this a little faster. So now you're going to see when this is not equal to one, it's on, and when it is equal to one, it's off. So we're not having to mess with the logic. You can see as soon as it turns to one, it turns off. So keep that in mind. Not equal means it's on except for when, it, when the two match. The next piece is uh, less than or equal to. Again, you'll see here, what you'll see here is that this guy's going to say less than, so it's less than 5, all the way up to it uh, reaches 6. So it stays on until it reaches the value of 6. And then the greater than. You'll see here what I've got here. As soon as this reaches the value of 10, we're reaching the, the, uh, uh, we're reaching the opposite. Uh, uh, the, the value of 10 and dropping it out. So if uh, if I came in here and I put a uh, another contact in here, say uh, uh, I just grab some random input maybe. And then I turn him off. You're going to see this guy count to 10, 11, 12, right on past 10, right? And then as soon as I click him on, because this value is greater than 10, we're going to reset that counter. Right back to zero again. So count right back up again. So so that is the, uh, the commands here. A lot of these are relatively uh, intuitive. Um, just don't let them trip you up because they are there's some the, a little bit of tricks to a few of them The limit one is definitely a tricky one because it, uh, it, it uses the value four and six uh, When you have the, uh, the the low limit and the high limit in the proper place But when you flip them, it's using the values outside that range So it's got like in this particular case if you're looking at this the only time this is going to turn off is when it's equal to what five so there you go. So that's how that, that works. So, um, so that is today today's lab or this week's lab for uh, 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 the uh, data manipulation instructions. I um, hope, uh, hope you guys are all doing well. I hope things are going well for you. Uh, I've been seeing some uh, population of the uh, uh, Unit 3 stuff, all, all uh, online stuff is coming, uh, coming together for you guys. I see uh, getting better and better. Uh, make sure you're submitting everything through Blackboard. I, I, I'm getting so many emails now that I, I can't uh, I can't distinguish uh, students from faculty, or other faculty, and, and uh, I, I'm getting uh, too much information, and I, I can't manipulate all that information. If it doesn't show up in Blackboard, I'm not going to grade it. So uh, make sure you can get it into Blackboard. If you can't get it into Blackboard, let me know. Say, hey, I'm missing some information. I don't know where to put it. I don't know anything of this nature. Uh, I do have a video in Blackboard called uh, Blackboard Help uh, to, to give you some kind of indicator on how to uh, upload your files into Blackboard. Um, so again, if you have any problems with that, give me a shout here. I'll, uh, I'm on uh, email quite regularly now, so um, I'll be talking to you soon. Adios. Bye-bye.